Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pierre Andriani, Design Studio Solutions Specialist from Autodesk. Today we're going to talk about Dynamo, which can be a very intimidating topic. And a lot of people have this thought about Dynamo about doing patterns everywhere and they're very difficult to do. And it can do that, but today we're going to talk about how we can automate our life using uh, a very simple script with uh, Dynamo. So if we look at what's on my screen right now. So I have a rear window and a light bezel. Uh, a lot of times when we, we do a, a window, sometimes you have to do a bezel, a obscuration band around the, the bezel here, or you have to do a, um, if this is your outdoor, outdoor, your outside um, surface for your glass, you have to offset it and trim it at a certain point. So if you do, for example, for a light, for a uh, obscuration band here, you would have to go ahead and offset this um, very slightly, maybe minus three or so. That's fine. Let's do a minus 20 just so we can see it better. And then you have to hide everything else. And then you go a, do a tubular offset of whichever value. Bye. And we'll do this one here and then you can trim it and keep uh, discard the uh, outside. So now I have this exaggerated bezel, but this would be your obscuration band, more likely closer in uh, closer in uh, dimension to the light. Or if you do a, a bezel here, you have to go do an offset, offset, inboard, and then do a again similar thing. Do a tubular offset here, here here and here and then trim it discard so it's kind of the same operation you have to do a regular surface offset and then do a tubular offset of uh, that surface one thing is if you're in a cast situation things can be moving really quickly and it'd be nice to automate this offset first and then tubular offset second and this is where Dynamo can help you do these tasks really well. So if you go to transform, go to Dynamo and then go ahead and launch Dynamo. Uh, close that and launch Dynamo right here. So again, what we're going to do is to automate an offset and automate a tubular offset. Okay, so I'm here in Dynamo with a new file. And I have uh, a lot of my commands on Dynamo here and this is my regular workspace. So if nothing's going on, I'm here, I'm in my nodal workspace. If I click here on the object space, now I'm back on the object space with the left mouse button, middle mouse button, and right mouse button. And this is my nodal space. So if I want to look at nodes, I can go in here and say, okay, alias, let's find something from alias. So select from alias as list. If I click on it and it sends it to my node space, and then I can move, zoom in, zoom out. And if I need to switch into the 3D space, this is where I go. I switch to my node space, so here I am. So right now I have nothing selected. So what if I say I want to select a surface, click select, and now I'm into back into the alias. So if I click on here, I'm going to say select a surface. Which surface is it? I'm going to select that one and hit send to Dynamo. So now if I switch to the my Dynamo screen, and here I do have a one surface, one selected element, and two one list, like so here. If I want to look at it, I can go to my 3D environment and frame all, and there it is. So that's my actual window inside Dynamo. Switch to my nodes. Okay, so the first thing I said I want to do is I go ahead and do a offset, right? So if I type in this look at surface offset. What? And here I have a surface offset geometry. If I click on it, then the node gets here into my space. So I'm right here in my nodes. I'm going to say, okay, this, I'm going to connect it to my surface offset. And then it's going to ask me for a distance. So what if I use a slider to input the distance? And this is another uh, thing we want to talk about here. If I click on here, this surface is an input, right? So if I click here and say, it's already selected as input. What we're gonna do is gonna say group, create a group. I'm gonna right click here and then say, what kind of input is it? Well, it's an input, inputs are in red. I'm gonna type in select the surface. 
so great. So now I have a surface that I select, and now the distance. So what if I use that as a slider? So if I say, okay, let's find the slider. And here I have a number slider, so I can click on here, and it gives me a number slider. And this will be how I input the offset into my Dynamo file. So if I say 0 to 100, it's fine. I'm going to say, okay, step by 1. And then I can say distance here, offset. So if you look at the number slider, you can see how it, it switched to 3D. You can see how it changes the actual, in real time, it changes the offset itself, right? So this is an input as well. So I'm going to say right click is input. And I'm going to control G group. I'm going to say right click misses in pink and say surface offset. Okay, so that's my surface offset for this particular thing. So here, my surface and my surface offset. So here, the thing with the surface offset is offsetting into the up direction. I want it to go down. So what I need to do is kind of reverse the offset itself. So if I go to math operators, I'm going to say use a multiply function. So divide, I'm going to say multiply. So X times Y. And I'm going to say minus one. So if you double click, it gets you a code block. I'm going to type in minus one. So now this surface offset, I'm going to click on X to Y x by a minus one and then if i click this number here to my distance now you can see it's offsetting in the other direction so i'm going to make this invisible for now so preview geometry off so now the only thing i see in my diagram is the offset of the surface in space and the amount it's offset by from 0 to 100 with this little slider okay so far so good so now to get the tubular offset, I need to find out how many uh, curves I have around this surface. So if I look at my library, I'm going to type in surface perimeter. And it's going to say surface perimeter curve. So here it's going to say what are the curves on the perimeter. So I click on it. And I say, okay, surface into here. So now we can see the perimeter curves are here. Okay, make that preview off. So now I have those perimeter curves. Okay, so now I need to generate a circle and then run a tubular offset. So the first thing I need to do is, okay, where is on these curves, I'm gonna find a point in the middle. So now if I type in here, if I say curve point at parameter, Curve point of parameter is here. So all these curves are there. And right now, if I don't type anything, my parameter is zero. So I have a, if I curve parameter from zero to one, I have all the starting points there. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm in the middle because sometimes in the ends, it could be a little issue. So I want to make sure that I'm right in the middle of the curve. So I'm going to say um, 0.5 and right there so now i have all the points in the middle so i have how many curves do i have in this case i have five points and one two three six points one two three four five six okay so now i want to generate a circle from this point so what i need to do is first of all if i zoom in a little bit i need to find out which what's this vector here so i can put a circle that's normal to this vector right here Okay, so what I need to do is, okay, so curve tangent parameter. And we look at the curve tangent at parameter. Click here. Okay, so now the tangent is going to be which curve am I using? I'm using these curves. Am I, what parameter am I using? I can use half again, so I'm going to use these. So now this gives me the vector of each tangent point. So this vector going this way here at this point there. Okay, so now I have this curve tangent to parameter and the point. So now I can generate a circle. 
So now I need to generate a circle by center point. Oops. Radius normal. But uh, let's see if we find our circle. So let's go back to circle. Okay, circle geometry here. By center point, radius normal right there. So click here. And then I'll need to find is the center point. So my points are here. The radius. Uh, just to, to see it, I'm going to type double click to get a code. And let's say 100. And the normal. See right there, There's no, the circle is oriented you know, square to grid. So it's not really gonna help to do a tubular offset. So if I find a normal, which I did, which is this guy right here, then I can put the vector here and you can see how it automatically lines up my circle into the right direction. So this will be the amount of, this is the tubular offset itself. So I need to, this is gonna be an input. So if you change it, I need an input of three mil, four mil, 10 mil. So here I can also, either create a slider or I can say just type in it. So if I right click and type in number, just to show you different ways to get inputs. So a number here, I'm gonna say it's an input, yes. And I'm gonna group it, make that group color, uh, group style as an input. I'm gonna type in uh, tubular offset size. Right here, so let's type in uh, for now. Let's type in 50. Why not? So now, this tubular offset size, I'm going to delete this here and I'm going to use this 50 into this radius right there. So, there we go. All those, all these operations here to be a tubular offset. So, what I can do is I click all these, group them, control G and type in, this is a tubular offset group. And this says, uh, control G, and type in just regular surface offset. Just to make things nice and tidy, I like to undo these. So you have your red inputs, tubular offsets, group. Okay, now my tubes, all I need to do is start to sweep them, sweep those curves. So what we do for that is we do the solid, solid function. So we can do a uh, solid, solid, and then we can look at how they're generated and then you have solid by sweep somewhere. There it is. So if I click here, so what's the profile? The profile, the actual curve, the circle itself, the path is gonna be the curve. So I gotta find where is the curve itself. The curves are from here, surface perimeter curves. And there's your sweeps. So I have, uh, if you look here, it tells you how many surfaces you have. I have six, six solids that generate this um, tubular offset. So I'm gonna unify everything just to make things easier. So I'm gonna say under solid, you have solid by union, so click on that. And seal them all up together, solid by union. So if I make that invisible, click on here. So now I have one simple intersection for my geometry. So now all I need to do is do a geometry intersect. Click here once. So now what is that gonna do? I'm gonna geometry intersect the solid itself. And I need to go back to the surface offset, which is here. Let's see it again. And I'm gonna use that and surface intersect up. right there. And this is the resulting thing. We cannot see it because everything is in the way. So let's make that invisible and let's make that invisible. And now we can see the actual end result of this tubular offset in one go right here. So this is what I need to send back to Alias. But if I uh, gently change that by, I don't know, 40, this will update right there, or 20, this will update. 
perfect. So now what I need to do is send this back into alias. So if I go back here and go to alias, send to alias. And we can go here and click this geometry, send back to alias. And the script itself is done. So I'm going to say file save as offset. Uh, let's call it, uh, I don't know, tubular offset script. Save it. And now I can close that. So the next thing I can do is close that as well. You can see I actually did it. I did sent it back to alias and back. But now if I go to my player, click on Dynamo Player, and it's going to ask you where is the script. So I saved it here to really offset script. Open. And now you see all the inputs that we had, the sur to surface offset, the tubular offset, and the surface. So if I click which surface do I want, this one, how much offset do you want? I'm going to have a nice at 30, why not? And here I can type it in, I say 40. But as you can see, you can do a slider here and a number here. I can do a number here, a slider here. I just wanted to show either way to enter a, uh, a number. So if I hit build, And there you go. So now this is offset 30 down and with a 40 mil obscuration bands. If I want to make my band bigger, I can hit 60, hit update. Wait for it. There it goes. So that's a nice obscuration band down. Obviously obscuration bands will fire a lot closer to the glass. Maybe, I don't know, two mils. Let's try that. And I hit update. And there you go. This is all in real time. And I did it right there. So again, if we have a light bezel, we do can do the same here. Let's try uh, 13 and 6, uh, maybe not 60 because it's kind of big. So let's do 20. So here's the offset 13 uh, with a 20 band. Build. There we go. So I can hit that update. I can do have an update update as well. So I'll update automatically. Oh, I type in here 10. And it's in this case, it's really quick. So there you go. As, as I said, uh, Dynamo is here to automate some things that you can use a lot in your daily workflow. If there are some automations you'd like uh, me to have a look at, by all means, send me a message or a comment and I will happily take a look at that. A lot of you, I'm sure, have the same question, by the way. This works well for one surface, but can you do the same script with multiple surfaces? The answer is yes. I will let you digest this video first. And the next time I will show you how we can modify the current script to allow for multiple surfaces. Thank you again for watching and for subscribing and we'll catch you next time.